so when i started using the speed app i attended all the classes uh, by dr basant sir religiously i would stop everything in my life and attend basant sir's classes i attended all of the classes i attended all the previous year questions that were there on the app i made a complete copy i saw which questions had been and topics had been asked repeatedly one thing i would like to say is the general surgery part on the speed app is very huge so i bring in all the wishes and greetings on behalf of all the faculty members of speed medical institute to dr sapnil suman for scoring a topmost rank of aml 1 and cml 7 in a specialty of mcs surgical gastroenterology in any ss october 2024 Congratulations! Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Great. So, can we know a brief background history of you us from where you started till date? Yes, sir. I am a resident of New Delhi. I have been born and brought up in New Delhi. I have done my MBBS and MS General Surgery from Maulana Azad Medical College, and I passed out from my MS last year. And since then, I've been preparing for these exams. So, you have given two cycles of exams. I have given four INISs. And one neat SS exam. Okay. <laughs> so, can we share uh, the story from last four in SS and one neat SS? What all happened through that and right now? Yes, sir. So, I have wanted to be a surgeon since my second year of MBBS, and I wanted to be a surgical gastroenterologist from my final year MBBS. That was that much was clear, and I have had very little doubts about it. So, when I joined MAMC, I was posted in a unit where. surgical gastro was being practiced extensively so i had a we had a couple of whipples esophagus and etc going on so i started my first year was quite hectic you know first year general surgery is hectic my second year also was sort of tumultuous so i started my preparation from third year late third year and i feel that is late for starting preparation and then i gave the april exam last year i had not yet passed out my mbb ms sorry and i did not qualify in the theory exam i then qualified in the november exam and the april exam this year but i did not uh, get selected for the interview so then i uh, i had uh, did not i did not do my sr ship i had given up completely i just wanted an mchc seat in surgical gastro so this time i on now i feel that my preparation was sorely inadequate for the past three exams i had also given neat ss last year i had secured a rank of 100 so i was getting surgical gastroenterology at sgp gi lucknow but i wanted to pursue it from either gb pant or aims new delhi that has always been my dream and thankfully thank god it's been fulfilled now then what happened three exams went and a neat ss went for that and after that what strategy help you to achieve today so sir i feel now in retrospect i feel that i had not studied i had studied well but i had not studied pertaining to the exam so this year once i had cleared the neat ss and i didn't uh, i had left the seat for neat ss so this year there was no neat ss so my preparation was completely focused on ina ss for this year and in hindsight it was a boon because i was very confused whether i should prepare for neat ss or ina ss the syllabus is overlapping but it, the preparation is quite different the focus of questions and the focus of uh, exam is very different in both of them for example when i had given the exam up until april this year my focus was more on general surgery and reading surgical gastroenterology from uh, the textbooks but once i did not clear this exam despite having given it three times then i saw that something is wrong with my strategy because i am reading and reading and reading and reading and i am solving mcqs and i am not getting anywhere so when i started using the speed app i attended all the classes uh, by dr basant sir religiously i would stop everything in my life and attend basant sir's classes i attended all of the classes i attended all the previous year questions that were there on the app i made a complete copy i saw which questions had been and topics had been asked repeatedly i read those topics from sir's notes and then the textbook as well so wherever they might have been given in bloomgard in shackleford on onco surgery book anywhere i read those topics and then i gave the exam i so it was it was really good that it, it's a game changer i mean uh... so i really feel sir that inss is more of a strategy based exam than a knowledge based exam this is one thing i have learned after giving it for two consecutive years you read the right things you attempt the paper in with the right state of mind i think if i can get through anybody can get through but the strategy is all that is important not knowledge really
not really in the knowledge the strategy is the most important thing so it made some relevance to your exam qualification definitely sir definitely definitely so how many questions did you attend doctor i attempted all the questions in all the four exams i have always attempted all the questions 80 out of 80 <laughs> 80 out of 80 i have always attempted that strategy did not work for the past exams but it did work for this exam i i have always attempted all the questions what about your general surgery preparation did you prepare i mean how do you handle that part of 25 30 questions so sir uh, one thing i would like to say is the general surgery part on the speed app is very huge and i got scared simply by looking at it so i did not use the videos for the general surgery much but uh, some topics which i felt were weak for example some topics in neurosurgery and everything which uh, that that is for neat ss for general surgery for iniss i saw the previous years questions i saw that they were more focused on endocrine surgery breast surgery trauma i read these topics from the textbooks completely i tried to attempt all the mcqs which were there and that's about it so the general surgery part i did not use much of the app but i focused more on the textbooks and what the previous year questions were because general surgery itself is it is probably a bigger subject than gi surgery <laughs> yes so then it's terrifying sometimes it's really terrifying i cannot read ctv as it's really terrifying <laughs> <laughs> yes so what will be advice for aspirants future aspirants of mca surgical gastroenterology so uh, when i started my journey i started talking to people at which centers was surgical gastroenterology good so aims new delhi gb pant sgpgi and a couple of other centers are the ones and everybody should aim for them i feel i my advice would be to first sit, i don't think we should run after both the exams because we have a limited mental capacity everybody has a limited mental capacity and one should have a thought at the back of his or her mind that whether i want to clear the iniss exam or the neat ss exam depending upon whatever one's circumstances are this year i did not have an option of reading for neat ss so i focused solely on the iniss exam and once you know that uh, which exam you are focused on you should see the previous year's questions see the important topics especially for iniss there are a lot of repeats iniss is a heavily repeated exam in the past four sessions i have seen multiple questions being repeated in the same exam and neat ss probably not so much i have given neat only once and probably not so many repeats but for iniss repeats are very important and what who recommended speed to you so sir one of my seniors dr jaydeep has who had gotten the rank of one last year in neat ss in surgical oh sorry surgical oncology yeah so he is at tata memorial so once he had gotten selected i talked to him for a cup for some time and he told me that he had prepared for general surgery part because he had given the neat ss so it prepared general surgery from your app and i had seen a couple of basan sir's videos and i had seen other apps as well but basan sir's lectures made the most sense to me honestly they yeah. had been explained beautifully and they made more sense to me and because the classes were live unlike other apps so i did ask a fair number of questions during my classes which i oh you attended all live classes i attended all of them i did oh. not <laughs> i had all sir all of sir's classes and i asked inane and irrelevant questions as well i attended all of them <laughs> yeah, since march uh, till october uh, sir's previous years recalls and i attended sir's all the recall videos on the app all of sir's videos on the app also i watched and your general surgery videos uh, you had a couple of videos on breast thyroid parathyroid i attended those relevant topics for iniss so it's uh, i think the, this uh, basant and faculty will be definitely happy in seeing your video <laughs> their feedback <laughs> i attended all of them i spoke whatever came to my mind because i knew that making a mistake here in the video is not a big deal but making the same mistake in the exam would be deathly mm. for my career So we always strongly believe in live classes and engaging the students on daily basis. That is a very good concept, sir. Most of the other apps are using recorded lectures, which they are good for you know people who are working and all. But it's very difficult to get a meaningful knowledge out of them. So once you talk to the faculty, they can clear your doubts on the spot. That is a that makes a huge difference. and okay. also there is some engagement happening in the back end or oh, classes going on i need to prepare motivation is also happening definitely sir so sir always used to ask what topic do you want next what topic do you want to study next so all of us would suggest topics and then sir <laughs> would the topic
that used to be very engaging that was i did not want to pursue any job i thankfully i am financially stable right now i did not want to pursue any job so that is why i had a lot of free time and i could attend all the videos i could see some uh, poster on your wall the and you were with a uh, sea loop of deodorant with the stomach and the pancreas so, uh, what is that all about so sir when while going through my preparation i was quite frustrated with my ranks and i was not being able to clear my exam i was quite frustrated honestly this is this i had made at the end of last year so one day i sat down while i went to the market i brought a chart i brought a couple of color pencils and i told myself i'll draw a diagram and hang it in my room i'll see it every day i'll see that ripples that i need to do throughout my life <laughs> <laughs> that i need to remove throughout my life and i'll see i wake up i see it every day mm. i know that i want to do this for the rest of my life in the entire interview my eyes only on that <laughs> myself and it's a motivation for me everyday motivation it came through the big bang that's a, that's that's a success behind this not expecting this result i really i was expecting that probably i get through some rank and maybe some peripheral aims but i did not know that i would get aims my interview went fine uh, yeah i want to know about that i mean can you tell us what happened how did you prepare for interview you would have interview this is the, i think this is the interview that you attended right so what did they ask you I mean how did you prepare how did you i mean that is very important na huh? from cml 7 uh, yeah then yes. to migrate to 1 yes sir the migration can you tell us on that so i had because we have no idea about what our theory marks are so before preparing for the inss exams i have talked to everybody who stopped the last four exams so i have talked to everyone who has gotten aims merit list rank 1 for the past four exams and i've asked them how they have prepared and then when i got through the interview this time i talked to a couple of my seniors at aims gp pant etc and i asked them how do you prepare for interview so those who had given the interview told me that they ask you two clinical case scenarios and one of them is a spotter so spotters are difficult everybody told me that spotters are difficult and you may not know what the spotters are so do not fret about it and the two clinical case scenarios so there were simple case scenarios one was rectal bleeding in a 55 year old lady and one was dysphagia in a 60 year old male so all the examiners wanted to know was what uh, kind of what is your approach i think that the examiners were more interested in how i would approach the patient because i uh, when i talked to a couple of other aspirants who had given the exam and probably have not secured such a good rank Uh, for example in the case of rectal bleeding people have jumped directly to rectal adenocarcinoma they have not even considered anal fissure or hemorrhoids right. so this is one thing they the examiners did not like and uh, for, as for the spotters they were difficult you i had to take my own sweet time to prepare for them otherwise i did not really read any theory for the interview because i knew the, the questions that they would ask me i would not know i cannot compete with those senior faculties i cannot reach their level right now at this stage in my life uh, otherwise i i'm a very anxious person per se but throughout the interview i tried to keep my calm i did not they did ask me a couple of questions about which i had no idea so i told them i'm sorry <coughs> i have no idea about these questions i told them very honestly i did not uh, you know fire darts in the dark this is something that everybody told me do not try to outsmart them they are senior level faculties <laughs> for years do not think that you can outsmart them i did not try that okay great now time to thank and who all you want to thank they have helped you been with you to build this career till date i would first of all and always and always my parents there is no comparison for what they have done for me my teachers at speed my ms mbbs college it's not a one day job it's reading and learning over the years that has led me to this and then my friends who have always told me that no if any one person is suitable for mc surgical gastroenterology it aims it is you ah. my friends yes <laughs> and i would like to thank all of them and at last i would like to thank myself <laughs> <laughs> i think this is the first interview somebody has thanked him themselves is the only you actually i and i have never heard this so far i would have minimum done 1500 interviews i'll tell you for excess and this is the first time someone has thanked themselves i the most important because i mean your physique your mental everything has worked towards it very good actually
there have been a lot of setbacks for the past one year in my personal as well as professional life but i have always thought of one thing that i'll get up tomorrow with a fresh energy and i will do that whipples that's there on my wall you will you will you will <laughs> great i mean interview with you itself is a lot of positive energy and i mean high voltage <laughs> high frequency high voltage it's good and it's quite infectious as it will be quite infectious also thank you sir. so then i think we are coming to the end of this and we once again we wish you on behalf of the spear institute all the best and all the success for a great career in surgical gastroenterology and a person who will be able to do the maximum number of laparoscopic and robotic vehicles in the country and the nation thank, thank you so much thank you so much thank you